Working the graveyard shift at Moe's Diner was usually uneventful. The familiar aroma of coffee brewing and bacon frying in the back was my nightly comfort. It was just past midnight when he walked in. Tall, lanky, with wild eyes and disheveled clothes, he looked like he hadn't slept in days. The sour, pungent odor that clung to him made my stomach turn. Hey there, he rasped. Got any coffee? Sure thing, I replied, forcing a smile. As I poured him a fresh cup, the rich aroma temporarily masked his stench. Rough night? You could say that. He took a long sip, his eyes darting around the diner. There was something about him that set my nerves on edge. What's your name? I asked, trying to keep the conversation light. Jake, he said after a pause, his gaze locking onto mine with an unsettling intensity. Nice to meet you, Jake. I'm Sam. You passing through? Yeah, just needed a break, he replied, his eyes flicking towards the door every few seconds. We made small talk, but his answers were curt and vague. The smell of him was becoming unbearable. And just as I was about to ask if he wanted something to eat, I heard the distant sound of sirens. Jake's eyes widened, his grip on the coffee mug tightening. The sirens grew louder, sending a chill down my spine. The regulars in the corner looked up, puzzled. What's going on? One of them asked. I didn't know. I walked to the window and saw police cars surrounding the diner. Officers, guns drawn, positioned themselves around the entrance. I turned back to Jake, my pulse quickening. What's happening? I whispered. Before he could answer, the door swung open and a police officer stepped inside. Everyone, stay calm. We're looking for an escaped convict. He's dangerous. Jake stood up abruptly, knocking over his mug. Coffee spilled across the counter, mingling with the smell of his sweat and the metallic scent of fear. Jake, sit down, I said, trying to keep my voice steady but Jake's eyes were wild with panic. I can't go back, he muttered, more to himself than to me. I won't go back. In an instant, he lunged at me, his hands reaching for my throat. The world seemed to slow down. All I could think about was his sour smell and the desperation in his eyes. I stumbled back, fear gripping me. Before he could reach me, the police swarmed in. They tackled him to the ground, pinning him down with practiced efficiency. The regulars watched in stunned silence. The diner was filled with the sounds of grunts, the clinking of handcuffs, and the smell of sweat and fear. Jake struggled against the officers, his face contorted with rage and desperation. You don't understand, he screamed. I had no choice. They made me do it. The officers ignored his pleas, hauling him to his feet and dragging him toward the door. One of them turned to me his expression softening. Are you all right? I nodded, my hands still trembling. Yeah, I think so. Good, we'll need you to give a statement, he said. Is there anyone else here? Just a couple of regulars, I replied, my voice shaky. The officer nodded and motioned for his colleagues to secure the area. The tension in the diner began to dissipate, replaced by a lingering unease. The smell of fear and sweat still hung in the air, mingling with the familiar scents of coffee and bacon. As they led Jake out, he turned to me, his eyes filled with a mix of anger and sorrow. Remember what I said, Sam? They made me do it. It's not over. His words sent a shiver down my spine. I watched as he was shoved into the back of a police car. The officers began to disperse, some staying behind to take statements and secure the scene. I sat down at the counter, trying to process what had just happened. The smell of coffee was comforting, but the events of the night had left a mark on me. The regulars came over, their faces filled with concern. You okay, Sam? One of them asked. Yeah, I replied, forcing a smile. Just another night at Moe's Diner, right? They chuckled, but the laughter was strained. Tonight was different. The smell of fear and the memory of Jake's wild eyes would haunt me for a long time. As I cleaned up the spilled coffee and tried to restore some sense of normalcy, 
I couldn't shake the feeling that Jake's warning was more than just the ravings of a desperate man. 